seven, so we'll just go ahead and get started. And um, uh, thank you all for coming on the third. What we thought is the final public hearing for the public uh, for the planning commission. Um, do you want me to go through our song and dance since you've all seen it before, or do you want <laughs> basically? Okay. And? No, I'm fine. I just want to hear what you already told me. Okay. What the changes are from so the last round. I'm going to uh, get my report here. The, the um, reminder on this, oh, I can't find my report. I want it to have here. Okay. Anyway. Um, yeah, we've had three hearings, and um, the first hearing was a year ago, in September of 2022. Um, and uh, I think uh, we all realized that we, there were some issues. Um, so between September and May of 2023, we worked um, with members of the Lakes and Streams and the Conservation Commission to affect some um, different language changes, especially in the shoreland overlay. Um, <clears throat> we went ahead and uh, made those changes, um, and the highlights of those changes in the April, um, uh, in that public hearing then was keeping the impervious surface at 10%, um, putting out some more specifics as to what could be done in the upland area of the shoreland, or the shroud, like we like to call it, um, and trying to uh, unite things with all of the other natural resources um, from that, from that uh, natural resources and uh, water in 3.12 and 3.13 and 3.14. So, that's what we did, and we um, passed all of that in May, or yeah, in May, and we took it over and turned it over to the select board and said, we're ready to go. The select board did have a hearing, and they uh, voted to uh, move it over to a vote, and we were scheduled to start having a vote on these in early, in, on August 10th. The, um, Ballots were going to go out on July 10th, which was the day of our floods. So <laughs> I think it was kind of fortuitous in many ways that we didn't have the vote because by in the ensuing time between when the select board had their um, public hearing, we heard firmly from the people in River Cor in the river um, from Ned Swanberg. DEC river management, that we were not up to par in our uh, NFIP um, flood management um, conditions, nor did we meet quite the river corridor standards for uh, improved ERAF. And since um, it was a point of all of this to get to that point that we would pass floodplain management and river corridor management, um, we decided that we would pull the vote. I mean, that was a decision that we had made right before the flood um, and work solely on trying to get um, to that point where we would pass river corridor and flood management. So that's what we did. Um, and the new, uh, there was some minor changes on, um, what's the word I want? Sub, uh, substantive, uh, important, um, my, main, my mind went, you, you know, when you, we're making all kinds of corrections to, pe to the houses, substantive, what's the word I want? Not substantive, well anyway, I'll, I should have found it. Um, so when we went to flood management, What we do have, uh, basically in River Corridor, there is no new development in River Corridor. 
Um, we put together a grid that uh, spells out specifically what can be in conditional uses, both in flood hazard overlay and in river corridor. Put together a chart of what exactly can go in. Um, substantial improvements is the word I want. Um, what constitutes uh, substantial improvements um, and that always goes to DRB in the flood hazard area. Um, so there's a new chart that's laying that out. We've got pretty specific um, language as to what you can do to buildings in the flood hazard overlay and in the river corridor. Um, the thing that they wanted us to be sure of is that there are some little streams that look like little red lines. They are really considered part of rate recorder, and we had to spell out for sure in our language that there is a 50-foot buffer on those streams. So those were some of the things that we um, added um, in uh, what we learned then in early September is that with those changes, um, we now um, comply with both the flood hazard uh, or the NFIP, the National Flood Insurance Program, and with the um, EREF. Can I ask you a question about that? When you say little streams with red lines, how do you define those? I mean, are they? They're part of River Corridor. It's a stream that has a receiving area between 0.5 and 2 square miles, and those are considered like River Corridor, though. They're, they're so small, they don't put them on the river corridor map. So there's this big orange spider and then little little red lines following it. So those were the basic changes that we made. And that's where we are. Just a, a quick question. Uh, because I confess I didn't do very much with your river corridor and, and flood control uh, regulations. Um, in the, <clears throat> it's three point, one of those, 12, I guess, um, it's, where it's talking about buffers for streams, it's 35 feet. That's right. Which I assume means 35 feet on each side, although yep. it never really Sounds quite says that. Yep. But what I'm hearing now is if you're in the river corridor, it's... Certain, it's, certain streams it's, are 50 feet. It's 50 feet and not in, 35. And if I could, there's a difference between the riparian buffer for the 35 feet has to be vegetated, right? Naturally vegetated, whereas right. the river corridor defines the river it's, corridor it's no for purposes zone. of applying the zoning. Does that make sense? I'm sorry, I missed part of what you said right It here. defines the district. That 50 feet defines the river corridor. The, RC, the river corridor overlay district is defined by that 50 feet, uh -huh. where a and R hasn't gone and done a river study and mapped out where it goes. It's one of the smaller streams that John was talking but it, about. But it, it doesn't, doesn't have to be vegetated. There's a there's a no buffer. build zone. No it, okay. Yeah. But, yeah. You can't you can't build in it but but it can you you know if you're if it's a hay field you can still cut the hay in. Okay, so what the people did down by the stream that runs into Bliss Pond by haying within like ten feet of the stream, that's fine under under the flood control, but might not be fine under. The well, if they're if they if they're doing it now and they do it consistently, they can keep doing it. Uh, the, this ha doesn't interfere with the grandfathered nature of that. I'm oh, not supposed okay. to use sure. even, even with a 35 foot. Yeah, I'm okay. not supposed to use grandfathered anymore. The pre-existing uh, uh, right. use um, <laughs> will go away if they if they stop doing it for a period of time. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Should I be advancing these slides? I'm not even using them, so. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I, they, they said that they've we, they've seen it before, it, so we're not it, even going. It's all the people, all the people that are here are the ones who helped us write this, so. <laughs> yeah. And they didn't write we recorder, but yeah. Anyway, so, uh, okay. Um, any other questions? So, I think there was something about no mowing down. Mm -hmm next to streams. I didn't realize that if it's been mowed, it can continue to be mowed indefinitely. 
Uh, the actual reading on that pre-existing mowing is a landowner who has mowed in a buffer of surface water other than wetlands once within two years of the effective date of, these reg of those regulations may continue to mow the same area following adoption of this bylaw. However, the area mode shall not be expanded and failure to mow at least once every two years shall mean that the provisions of this section apply and the area may no longer be mowed. So we're gra granting them the ability to keep doing what they're doing every two years, but once they stop mowing, they can no longer mow. Right. We, I think that we already have such a provision for ponds and lakes, and now it's simply expanded to streams. Um, I don't remember what we had in Shrod. For, we don't. Uh, we have uh, in Shrod. I'd have to. In Shrod, it's. It has, it, it's um, you can keep mowing if you mow, but if there's any development that happens on the property, then you can no longer mow. But uh, I think in a nutshell is what it is, and then you can't. I think well, in, in Shrod, in fact, there's no no new development that that uh, that that increases increases the footprint of any structure that's there. That's not allowed. So, um, right, but it's right. But it says if, if development occurs, you know, and it isn't specific in the Shrod. I mean, you, you read the language; it says if, it, if it development occurs in the Shrod, then you can no longer mow. You can't expand mowing. So I agree with you that in the 100-foot buffer, you can't develop. Yeah. Yeah, it is. The, the language isn't as quite as precise as you right. said. It I'm said, sorry, Larry, I didn't hear I you. I said the language isn't, isn't quite as precise about not expanding the footprint. I mean, it, it does a couple of times just say no new development. We might yeah. specify what, what it is. Yeah. <clears throat> Just with regard to lawn mowing, that's all I'm looking at. But. Which is fine with us. <laughs> And anything that happens in there, we want it to happen in a way that moves things away from the pond and allows the pond to become, the edge of the pond to become better. In the shroud, um, I have to get to a point. <coughs> What we say in the shroud, it's in, sec, um, in K, number nine, um, <clears throat> lawns within the shoreland vegetative buffer zone, legally in existence on January 3rd, 2005, and which are mowed at least once every two years, may be maintained if no new development takes place. And the key word there, no new development takes place. Following new development or failure to mow at least once every two years, the area may no longer be mowed. Yeah, that's what Noreen said. Yeah. All right. And effective July 6, 2025, I don't know where we came up with that date, no permit shall authorize mowing within the shoreland vegetated buffer zone. The use of fertilizers, herbicides, and pesticides is prohibited. So, moving down to section L, number five. <laughs> um, I'm not sure how or whatever went along. You know, so much things, so many things go on when we review things. Um, I talked with John. Let me back up a little bit. Noreen sent me an email. Um, commenting that we had changed no pollution to the word limited amount of pollution in section L5. But in 3.12, we kept it at no pollution. And so I talked with John, and he did a quick search, and he found that we have eight places in our um, regulations where we have no pollution. And this was the only place where we have limited amount. So we will probably change everything to be consistent to no pollution. 
as the consistency from one place to another. Um, we will have some discussion in our meeting after this, but uh, after the hearing, but that's what's uh, proposing. And furthermore, I guess I should just say that we've had an editor um, doing the uh, looking at formatting, punctuation, and minor language editing. Um, and this particular um, phrase, uh, L5, uh, she's recommended a different way of stating this. So if I can just share with you her recommendation and see what you think about it. Um, section f uh, L5 starts, development shall be planned to prevent or mitigate the discharge of pollutants and erosion into groundwater, surface waters, and other huh, protected natural resources. You want that protected there? I, well, in the, se in the second reading. We in this, okay, well, we have uh, and other natural resources to the extent practicable. Where appropriate mitigation measures utilizing best management practices, BMP, as currently available under the Department of Energy Conservation, and we have the link, may be used to ensure that, that I wonder how that, that pollution or eroded material shall not reach ground or surface waters or other protected natural resources. It's just a better grammatical way of maybe saying it. If I interpret that, if I just, let me just interpret it. To me, it says essentially the same thing, that right. you have to take some action to prevent either pollutants or eroded material right. from Going into the buffer zone, the zone. Right. So that was her recommendation for, for that. And then it goes to C sections 312, 313, and 315. Is, there, there's no way to put that up on the screen, is there? Um, John's probably got it. I don't know. Do I have that exact language? I can bring up I can bring up her recommendation, but it Yeah, you can bring you just bring it up. I, I recopied it on mine. That's all. I but, she, but her note, uh, if you bring it up, you'll see her note on the comment section. I'm going for 3.12. 2.4L5. That's, you're in seven. Go back to four and I'm, try. I'm still in the river corridor. Yeah, but we no, no, we're in we're in two point four. We're in Shroud. Oh, okay. She's on page twenty-seven. Right there. Yeah, right there. So Tegan, her uh, her uh, where appropriate mitigation measures utilizing blah 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 is how she puts it, and and um, we <coughs> thought that it would be better than to say that it can be used to ensure. that uh, pollution or eroded material shall not reach ground or surface waters. It's just a different way of putting it. Yeah, I was trying to get Tegan's comments in there. So she found a couple other um, areas of, well, good questions that she found. Um, and and uh, English changes or grammatical changes that we'll probably be reviewing before we turn it over to the select board. So is that area that's highlighted all new? That area that's highlighted is the area that she is recommending to change. Okay. And Question. in the comment section is what she is suggesting to be the change. Oh, I and of course, the limited is struck out and then there's no pollution. Okay, so to ensure that no pollution. That's right. Okay. Um, could, well, could I just ask a question? I, you know, we were comparing this provision, this section 2.4L5, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. with 3.12A6, um, which both address pretty much exactly the same thing, but have 
what seems to us to be some pretty significant differences. What's going to happen to 3.12 A6, which I personally think is the best version of any of these? You're talking about? Well, okay. As I th thought, I th well, let me talk to you before I answer that. I'd like to see the language consistent throughout the document when it comes right. to pollution and erosion. We'd yeah, I would too. That's why I think this one ought to be used. Uh, which one are you on? Three point twelve A six. Well, we, we're going to keep it. I think what I said when I introduced this, that we would change limited to no or not having any pollution going in, and we would keep it that way so there's consistency in all of the document. So what we have here is that no pollution or eroded material shall reach ground or surface waters, and we're keeping it. Okay. I think... John suggested, and, I, and, and in my own way, I agree with him that the language ought to be the same. Yes, so we are agreeing with that. 2.4 L5 as it is to... Yes, and that's why we're changing it. That's why we're changing L5 back to no. Okay, but there are other, there are other aspects of it that are different too. It's a, just a matter of semantics. What, what are really, the aspects? It's, it's whether or not you would look to mitigation in the first instance to deal with something as opposed to if all else fails, you've got to do some mitigation, which is the... One of the big differences I think in these two. I'm not sure I'm understanding you. Well, you know, it all gets kind of complicated when we're down in the weeds, but 2.4 L5 starts off by saying development in the zone shall be planned to prevent or mitigate the discharge of pollutants and erosion, blah, blah. So it's an option, prevent or mitigate. And, and we've seen how mitigation has been used to allow developments to happen in other, as, in other aspects when if you said, well, you can't do it, but in some extremist situations you can, you, know, you can mitigate things as opposed to mitigation is one of your first possible options um, as a, somebody developing it. But um, I guess my question then to you is, if you want no pollution, you cannot have any development. Period. I mean, what? What? I, I, this is just my way of thinking, and we can't. We're, we're we're we've got people in the shoreland here that are going to develop, and and I, I personally, I mean, this is my personal thing, and I'm not speaking for the rest of the members of the planning commission. I find it very difficult to enforce a no. And I write a language in here that says there's going to be no pollution. And I have no way in hell to figure out how John or any other select uh, zoning administrator is going to administer that. So it's a good language. I agree. But I don't know how to enforce it. And so in the Shroud and in some of the areas in, uh, that are within rural residential that have streams, <laughs> there is probably going to be some development. I don't know how else to write it. We can, there's going to be mitigation. We want people to do best management practices as outlined by the state as best as possible. And I don't know how we do it. And that, so that's just my uh, okay. personal thing. Sorry. Okay. Just, just one. I think you originally said, the opening sentence said, designed to prevent discharge of pollutants and erosion. Mm -hmm. Not, it didn't say designed to prevent or mitigate. I think that's what Larry's point is, is that we're saying when you design it, the goal is to prevent these things from happening. And then if, if, you, if something happens or they arise, then you take mitigating actions to prevent it from reaching surface water or, or groundwater, et cetera. It, it, I think it's a question of whether... And how do you do that? Say someone's, say someone's got a, a fire pit and they use charcoal starter and, and the can tips over and they're, they're about 150 feet from the water and then it rains and you know that that is going to actually get into the lake eventually. That is pollution. What, what's supposed to happen in that case? And what, what is expected of the town? Are we supposed to chase someone down because we know that the surface, that the waters are being polluted, 
Well, what, what is the town supposed to do? No, oh, sorry, it applies to development, though, yeah. not, not somebody accidentally tipping over. Right. I mean, yeah. this is so accidental discharges of pollution right. are acceptable. Right, it something different okay. and, you know, yeah. unfortunate, and we hope they would deal with it, but... It so I think these are really important policy questions, but what I'm hearing that is also resonating is that there is different language used in different sections. So we already got your email about the no pollution versus the other language and there's a desire to make things uniform. Here we have a difference between 2.4L5 2 and 3.12B2, whatever the other one is in 3.12, that I think you pointed out, instead of um, designed to prevent discharge, you, uh, it's, it's mitigation is used in one place along with prevent. So in 2.4L5, it's planned to prevent or mitigate the discharge of pollutants. And then in the other one, and I may have the wrong reference here, it's uh, designed to prevent discharge. I, I, That's all. I think. They just don't want to I, I see that. And I'm reading yeah. that first sentence. And it says, the development shall be planned to prevent or mitigate the discharge of pollutants and erosion into groundwater, surface water, and other natural resources to the extent practicable. You know, if you take mitigate out of that sentence, it, it doesn't become draconian because it says to the extent practicable. And then it goes on to say, this is how you can this is, you know, where appropriate, or, or down here, where appropriate mitigation measures utilizing best management practices currently available from the DEC uh, may be used to ensure that pollutant and blah, blah, blah. I, I think that's fine. I don't see any need to have the word mitigate in the first sentence because we go on to expand on best management practices, which is all about mitigation. So, so it, it says right up front says right up front that the intent is to not have any discharge of pollutants. And then it goes on to say, we understand that this is an impossible goal, but we're going to, we're going to hew as close as possible to that goal as, as we can. So you're, are you suggesting we take the I, word mitigate I, out? I think we can take the word mitigate out of that first sentence without giving up, without giving up any of the uh, capacity I have it up here. And we can talk about it at our meeting. To do it hearings. in a smart yeah. way. I, yeah. I don't, I, you know, it's, it, all of our, all of our, uh, all of our sections start out with uh, a statement of intent. And that's a, I think that's a good statement of intent. You know, that what we want is to not have it. And then we go on to say, we understand that that's, that, that there's going to have to be some shenanigans in order to do the best job we can possibly do, but <laughs> it's more I, consistent I think that's okay. If we get rid of I, I, if we can get rid of the word yeah. mitigate without losing any of the okay. flexibility that it's going to take in order to do the best job we can do on that. I think that's all right. You agree, John? Okay. Yes, we'll all right. Vote on it later, but Mitigates out. I, I'm a broken record, I guess, <clears throat> but you still have to deal with 312A6, which has different language applying to exactly the well, same situation. And I personally think that's the far better language than just cutting and pasting it and putting it in 24L5 would be the simplest and easiest solution and consistent with what you say you want to do, which is no pollution. If, you know. Because if you just change 2.4L5 sort of ad hoc and, and all, you still likely to have conflicts or or confusion between what it says. And yeah, what I get you. We we did we says. did do a cut and paste. We'll just do a cut and paste. Yep. Without the shoreland language, right? Or is that I, applicable in both? Yeah, I think the second half of that sentence it does exactly the same job, and it clear and it clears up the 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 necessity of having to compare one with the other to see which one. So where this, be, this part be used. here would be changed to where it copied. To, uh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I'm just going to highlight it for now. No, I, I, I agree with Larry. I think that 
that yeah. language. I think that language is fine, and if we're going to delete one or the other, this is no. We'll just copy. This things. is fine. Right, and then I think the other thing is, John, you found the other places where we had no pollution up in Highland and a few other places. Should we just copy and paste and put it everywhere else? It's all the well, same thing. It's uh, yeah, pollution it's and uh, surface water runoff and erosion. It's all the same okay. thing. Mm -hmm. But only one instance of limited, so we can change that to no. Yeah. Be on the same page. That's good. Good catch. Mm -hmm. A good catch. It's a good catch. Mm -hmm. I mean, consistency is important. <laughs> But I'm highly inconsistent most of the time. So. I, I, do, I do think that we, I mean, this one doesn't, doesn't say it quite the way the other one does. So if we enlist this wording, that's fine. I have a little bit of concern when we say, when we just blanketly say, we, we have to keep this stuff out of all natural resources because all natural resources include Includes my paved driveway. You know that's a natural resource. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I I do think that we should uh, zero in on protected or <clears throat> or sensitive or something. We should use some other word there to qualify the natural resources that we're gonna. Uh, like that. Yeah, because my natural resource might be different from yours, and we need to put it. We need to pick a, pick a list that we're gonna mm -hmm. apply this to and stick with it. Mm -hmm. You probably won't need this, but I'm going to forward you the email I sent to Noreen, which basically just has those two provisions set out mm -hmm. one to the other, so you can easily compare it mm -hmm. with, with a little editorial yellow. I would hope so. <laughs> That's on the way to help it. The low impact lakeshore development, there's a permanent dock. It's not a temporary dock. <laughs> We're on the cover of the low impact development standards. Is that not low impact? <laughs> no, we don't allow permanent docks. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> we don't allow new I'm sorry? New. We don't new. We don't allow new right. permanent. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, are there any other concerns? <laughs> um, and any questions do you think that you can think of? <laughs> Good job. Okay, well, with that, I guess we can say this public hearing is over. <laughs>